Easy guys, Dom here from Cringy Dad Gaming. So in this video, I'm gonna be giving you a few tips on how to defeat the Executioner. This is one of many hidden bosses found in Remnant 2. Now, if you'd like to know the location of where he is and the build that I use to defeat him, then stick around and I'll be talking about those in a moment. However, if you have already discovered the Executioner and you're just finding him a bit too difficult, then there will be a timestamp in the video for you to skip forward to the part where I actually fight him. So this hidden boss is found in Losum in the palace region and you will need to explore the beatific part of the palace down in the depths until you find this jester. When you interact with the jester they're going to perform and once they finish their performance, they're going to give you this magic quill. Now, this magic quill will allow you to draw doorways in specific parts of the palace, which will lead you through to different dungeons. Now, because of the game's procedural generation, you may not necessarily get the right dungeon that's going to have this boss in it. It may take you a few re-rolls of your adventure mode to be able to find it, as it did with me. And yeah, you'll eventually find this area either in something like the Great Hall or maybe even the Gilded Chamber as an example. So it's never always going to be in the exact same dungeon, but it does spawn in one of those dungeons. So you'll eventually come across this room that has this altar. It's a very iconic looking room. You can't miss it. There's nothing else like it in the game that I've come across so far and it has all these petrified corpses looking up to this figure with wings. There is a door to the left which we will open on the way back up. But to get to this boss there is this hidden hole in the wall here behind this picture. We just smash the picture and that now reveals the hole that we can just crouch and drop down into and now we're in the domain of the Executioner. Now you will have a little bit of a space here to be able to, I guess, gather your gear and get the right rings and amulets together before dropping down because as soon as you drop down that doorway there, the Executioner is going to appear straight away. So let's go through the items that I'm running at this stage. So I am running the Challenger archetype purely for the fact that you get pretty much an extra life. So if you get downed, he will revive himself once every 10 minutes. It's a pretty solid build for those of you who are soloing. Another handy archetype here is the handler. The fact that you get the dog is pretty cool. But the thing is about the dog is it does aggro enemies and can slow them down. It means they're going to not be focused on you so much. They're going to be focused on the dog to a certain extent. Again, another archetype that's great for solo players like myself, but it is good in this instance. So, I mean, what we're doing here is we're running an armor set that gives us a medium level of armor. So damage reduction is reduced by 40% and we've got a medium weight. 48, well, 50 is the cutoff before you get heavy. So we've still got some decent movement speed and dodge abilities at medium. Then we're using the Chains of Amplification and the reason why I'm using this amulet is because it increases damage dealt to targets suffering from status effects by 20%. The reason why I'm wearing that is going to become more apparent once you see what mods I've got on my guns. Next up we've got the ring called the Excess Coil. It means activating a skill generates a shield which will give us 25% shield of our maximum health. It really does come in handy for me personally on my playstyle and how I play. Then the Illumi Ring, which again increases all elemental damage dealt by 10%. Again, because of the elements that I've got on my weapons, it just increases the overall damage. Another ring that I found quite handy is the Ring of Crisis. Now, if our health drops below 25%, will gain a shield for 25% of our max health. Now, the reason why I've got this is it's almost like a contingency. It's like a little backup where if I am at that point where I need to drop a heal from my relic or maybe use a blood root or something like that just to get some health, 
that shield just gives me enough time to maybe move away from the fight and just try and heal up a little bit before actually dying. And then last but not least, we've got a ring that's going to help us with damage again from our elements and our weapons, and this is increased shock damage by 10%. So obviously we're running the Enigma, it's upgraded to the top, plus 10, and this thing is an absolute beast at the moment. It's pretty OP, but to be honest with you, this boss is OP, so I kind of find it okay to use. And then we're using the Chicago Typewriter, plus 20. If you've not got this gun yet, it's really good. I'll put a link in the video to how to find it. But this again has got the overflow ammunition on it, which is going to give us shock damage. So that's pretty much what I'm running at the moment. And I found a lot of enemies in this area are pretty weak to shock, which is why I'm running the shock mods. All right, so what we need to do now is literally just drop down. Now, we've got to be quite quick here because we need to get through this water. It really does slow us down. So we're going to try and put the dog in front of the executioner here to just, I guess, slow him down. We're going to roll through the petrified corpses that we're finding blocking our way. And in here we have an enemy that we just want to take down really quickly if we can. We don't want these guys following us, so we're going to try and kill them as quickly as we can. We're going to continue through the corridor. Again, we've got corpses here trying to block us in. Just roll through them. Now we're coming to this room where there's water. Now there are two of these enemies that fly around in here. We've got one to the left and then one, well, I guess now behind us up in this little hole. Usually flies down. Okay, so now we're in this little stairway area. We've got some doors that we need to unlock. Now there's a number of doors. Just make sure your weapon is reloaded before trying to open these doors. Trust me, you'll stand there reloading rather than opening the door, which is a bit of a pain. Now sometimes we've got a bit of time here now to be able to just get a few shots in. Sometimes he can't hit you with his lightning attack that he does when you're in this area. Sometimes it won't actually work. But notice that I had to dodge that because that attack is devastating. That is what actually made this boss really difficult for me the first few tries. That lightning attack, sometimes hard to see where he's shooting it. And you know, sometimes it's behind you. You can't actually see it, but then it does still hit you does devastating damage. As we run through here, there is the Sapphire Dreamstone ring there that you could probably pick up along the way. And again, what we're doing here is we're just trying to stay ahead of him to open all the doors. The reason why we're doing this is because it's gonna give us a decent amount of space to be able to fight him. You try and fight him down in those little narrow corridors in the water, and yeah, it's just not gonna work out. Now we've got some space, and he sometimes, he won't always follow you up. Sometimes he just stays back. But now we've got space here and we can, yeah, I guess have a bit of room to manoeuvre. We're now activating our mod and we're just going to try and pump as much damage into him as we can. I made a bit of a tactical error here and I almost trapped myself in a corner, rolling in the wrong direction. And uh, yeah, we wanted to really go this way. Now we've got some room, we can just now really just pump him full of lead, dodging his moves. And with our build the way it is... We're pretty much doing quite a bit of damage to him here. We're just going to finish him off with the Enigma. Now, believe it or not, he actually looks quite easy here, but he's harder than he looks. Trust me. And you might not be able to have the same build as I have right now for this boss because, well, there's a lot of different options, but also the fact that you might not have uncovered a lot of the amulets and rings that I have so far. It just purely depends on where you've been, what you've explored. Just try and run something that's going to do extended damage to him, like in terms of mods and stuff. Hopefully there's been some tips here to help you guys. I think really running up the stairs and unlocking all the doors is my major tip that I can give you here really, just to give you guys some space. Just a quick note as well I'd like to add, if you would like a really badass melee weapon, there is one hidden away in this area. I'll put a link to a video at the end here for you to watch so you can find where that is. But if this helped at all in any way, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Why not check out some of my other Remnant 2 videos? So I'll catch you guys on another video and thanks for watching.